Well, hey, wrestling fans, can you believe that this Sunday it is Hell in a Cell? Can you believe this Sunday we are seeing a WWE pay-per-view? I tell you what, for me, it feels like Clash of Champions was just here. How fast these pay-per-views come and go. I'm telling you, it seems like the build to these pay-per-views just keep on getting shorter and shorter. And quite frankly, WWE this week just threw it all up in the air and said, you know what? Hell in a cell build meant absolutely nothing except Bray Wyatt, The Fiend, and Seth Rollins. It's the only thing that mattered. Why? Because Crown Jewel. Why? Because Friday night Smackdown is this Friday. Look at everything that's going on in the WWE this week. You had Raw Premiere. And you have the premiere edition, the debut edition on Fox of Friday Night Smackdown. Where we will see Brock Lesnar facing Kofi Kingston for the WWE Championship. On Monday Night Raw, they had the Immortal Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair on Miz TV. They had Brock Lesnar tearing through Rey Mysterio. They had all this stuff going on. They announced that Hulk Hogan will be on one side, Ric Flair will be on another side at the next Crown Jewel type event at the end of October. And then what are we seeing at Hell in a Cell? What are we seeing, wrestling fans? As of now, Thursday before Hell in a Cell, we are seeing three matches. Three matches. And WWE Wonders, number one, why tickets are still on sale. Number two, to a point, uh, why there might be a lack of interest in this pay-per-view. I mean, the three matches they have, they are the most invested rivalries in WWE today. But... Look, there are a plethora of other rivalries and of other superstars you could genuinely put on this show to make us want to tune in. What about Shinsuke Nakamura versus Mustafa Ali? I genuinely want to see Mustafa Ali achieve something in the WWE rather than do what he has been doing. Mustafa Ali is in a rivalry right now with Shinsuke Nakamura where the WWE is more than likely going to put him in an Intercontinental Championship matchup. Mustafa Ali needs to capture the Intercontinental Championship at Hell in a Cell. They need to book that matchup and have him capture it. Wrestling fans, WWE will book it just based off the fact that Mustafa Ali has been losing because of Sami Zayn. I don't like the way WWE books things these days, but that's the way they'll do it. Charlotte versus 
Bailey, a toss-up. But you know what, wrestling fans? With how Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch have been going, I think Bailey very well might drop that uh, uh, women's championship if Charlotte and Bailey are booked for a SmackDown Live women's championship matchup at Hell in a Cell. Not announced right now, but you know what? I see Becky Lynch and Charlotte coming out victorious tomorrow night at Friday Night SmackDown, beating Sasha Banks and Bailey, the Boston Hug Connection. What will happen? Charlotte will get a number one contender spot based off that. Wrestling fans. These are two matches that will fill out the card. But look at some of the other superstars before we dive into what's actually on the show. Rusev, he's just back. I don't really want to see Rusev versus uh, Almighty Cringely. A.K.A. Bobby Lashley. I know you all haven't heard that in a while. But. It's coming. And quite frankly. Wouldn't bother me a bit to see Rusev on a pay-per-view matchup. It would be enjoyable to see someone new. Fresh. We're seeing Luke Harper on a pay-per-view match. Even if it does involve Eric Rowan, Daniel Bryan. Thank you, WWE, for putting Daniel Bryan in a matchup. Haven't seen him in a match in a while on pay-per-view. Roman Reigns, the big dog. Even though it does involve, you know, some other superstars. It's not just Luke Harper and a rivalry by himself. It's nice to see him back in the WWE. Quite frankly, it's nice to see Sasha Banks in Hell in a Cell with Becky Lynch in one of the hottest rivalries in the WWE today. And one of the most intriguing rivalries on Monday Night Raw. That is for sure. You can stamp that all over it. Quite frankly... I see Sasha Banks walking out. Your new Raw Women's Champion. I don't see her going over the SmackDown Live. I see Becky Lynch marching right over to SmackDown Live to help carry that brand on Friday nights. SmackDown is getting the man on Friday come the draft. Seth Rollins versus The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. That is one of the most intriguing, the biggest matchup on this card. And the one that has everybody scratching their heads. Believe me, it does. Because everybody in the WWE Universe cares about the character Bray Wyatt. Cares about The Fiend character. There's nobody in the comments below that's going to get me to believe. Get me to genuinely believe that they don't care about the fiend. Everybody, but everybody shuts up when Bray Wyatt comes on the screen. Just like people do when Paul Heyman comes on the screen. Wrestling fans, let me tell you, Bray Wyatt does not need to lose this Sunday. You know, it's rumored that he very well might be on his way to facing The Undertaker. Looks great on, great on paper. Fiend versus Deadman. 
Fiend versus Phenom. Fiend versus Demon of Death Valley. Fiend versus all these different names would be great on the build to the matchup. Undertaker in the graveyard digging a hole so he could put the Fiend's soul into it. So he could have a, a, a plot waiting right next to Jake the Snake Roberts, right next to the Giant Gonzalez, right next to all these superstars that he's collected over the years. Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kane, all the rest of them. He could be there. Bray Wyatt, he could have be in the Firefly Funhouse, and he could be going around looking at all the the people that he has hung up in the Firefly Funhouse. Seth Rollins, Kane, Kurt Angle, Jerry the King Lawler, amongst others. It would be a joy. It would be a great. Build. You could have the Undertaker inside the squared circle, cutting the promo, and and and, and Bray Wyatt interrupt during the Firefly Funhouse and, and cut the promo back and forth that way. Tremendous wrestling fans, tremendous. Or what about Bray Wyatt in the squared circle, and, and, and then the Undertaker just pop up. The lights go out. All this stuff really great would intrigue the wwe universe all of us wrestling fans to the point that we have to sh tune in to whichever pay-per-view wwe decides to put this match on however wrestling fans let me tell you that is a death warrant sign for bray wyatt because that means Seth Rollins wins Sunday. And that means, more than likely, The Undertaker beats The Fiend as well. Because WWE would more than likely have The Undertaker win. And let me tell you, wrestling fans, if The Undertaker beats The Fiend, and if Seth Rollins beats the thing what is the perception of Bray Wyatt especially since a lot of those characters that the thing has uh, collected gotten have not been matches then the perception is this guy this character is a loser. Why should we believe in him? What's the reason? What what what's the reason to believe? He can't win matches. He's a loser. He's a nobody. He is all talk. He doesn't need to do this. He doesn't need to lose. Bray Wyatt needs to walk out of Hell in a Cell this Sunday. New Universal Champion. Needs to happen. I'm hoping it happens. As a matter of fact, I am predicting now that it happens. Been a great build to it. A great build. I, I love how they have been booking The Fiend, scaring Seth Rollins, and, and, and everything of that nature. Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch. I don't like how they have built this match. You know, it's one thing... To have Sasha Banks and Bailey be on this dominant role. Dominant role. 
and see if you all really follow me and agree. They were on a dominant role on Path of Destruction with chair shot after 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 chair shot, after chair shot over everybody in their path. And then what happened? The man, Becky Lynch, took the steel chair and week in and week out, week in and week out, every show that they were on, dominated Sasha Banks and Bailey. Whether it was in a match, steel chair, didn't matter. Throughout the entire build to this Hell in a Cell matchup. Sure, Sasha Banks might have gotten uh, one backstage segment uh, uh, win, throwing Becky Lynch into, you know, uh, the wall. But, but outside of that, it really didn't amount to squat. So, Sasha Banks going to be victorious, without a doubt. It, it, it's just going to happen. I know I said it earlier in the, the, the podcast, but it's it's just going to happen. I can't make that any more clear. Sasha Banks is going to be the one. She's the only one on the Raw roster that can take the title off of Becky Lynch. When you look at everybody else that's in the women's division on the Raw roster right now, No one can take it off of her. Only Sasha Banks. But, this is your preview and predictions of Hell in a Cell. I really hope they add some more matches to this card, like the ones I mentioned earlier, like Mustafa Ali versus Shinsuke Nakamura, and they put the title on Mustafa Ali, we'll probably see the other matchup that I mentioned. That's a guarantee. And of course, Rusev versus Bobby Lashley. That's pretty much probably a guarantee based off what we saw on Monday Night Raw. <sighs> whatever. I don't want to see that particular matchup, but it would be nice to see Rusev on a pay-per-view. But y'all let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, everything. Be much appreciated. And until I see you again, this is Webby, and I'll catch you on the other side. Talk to you later.